Welcome back to the American College of Surgeons Bulletin Brief from the Front Lines. With me today is Linda Grow. Ms. Grow is the Chief Executive Officer and Executive Director of ARN. Welcome, Ms. Grow. Thank you, Dr. Wexner, for the opportunity to be with you. Well, it's a pleasure having you with us today. Uh, and I'd like to, if we could possibly start out by explaining ARN and talk a little bit about the history of ARN. And then perhaps after that uh, introduction, we can talk a little bit about how ARN works with ACS. Well, AORN is Association of Perioperative Registered Nurses. We have 40,000 members and we have about 200,000 in our universe. So we are in really looking at how we can continue to increase that membership. Um, we are the one area for perioperative nursing uh, in terms of looking at evidence-based guidelines and developing practice standards for patient care, as well as worker safety. Um, we're very focused on how we can make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that the operating room is safe. How long has ARN been around? We have been a member organization for 66 years. So we have a, a long, rich history and been partners with the American College of Surgeons that entire time. And we're very proud of that partnership. Uh, along those lines, we, we did work together uh, around COVID-19 in terms of the guidelines that were released jointly between our two groups, as well as the uh, American Society of Anesthesiologists and the American Hospital Association on guidelines for safe surgery. Perhaps you could elaborate on some of the other initiatives that go on behind the scenes all the time between ACS and ARN. Well, uh, AORN has a member on the clinical practice committee, uh, myself as well as a clini clinical nurse. And so we uh, participate and meet with that clin clinical practice committee uh, twice a year. And also during the time there are, are from time to time, Dr. Halverson, who's the chair, will reach out to us for some information or input. We also are a member of the, uh, the CSPS, which is the Council on Surgical and Perioperative Safety. This is an organization that Dr. Russell was very involved in forming in 2007. And Dr. Hoyt has also followed through and been actively involved. Dr. Healy and Dr. Zimmerman are the current representatives for the American College on uh, that organization. ARIN also has a guideline advisory board. This board is a um, multi-professional organization that looks at all the guidelines that are developed, the evidence-based guidelines that are developed by ARIN prior to them becoming uh, public knowledge, and they critique them and have an opportunity to sign off on them before they are published. So those are all very important areas that we collaborate on. And you're right, 2020 was a landmark year for us uh, in our collaboration. It was a landmark year in many ways. The collaboration was part of the silver lining in an otherwise black cloud, getting to work together with you and, and your team much more than, uh, than we would have otherwise with just the baseline activities. Uh, and along those lines, perhaps we could segue and, and transition into some of the issues that COVID-19 brought to, to your group because the operating rooms were at various times shut down, at other times overburdened with COVID-19 patients. Uh, there was a whole lot of flux going on and, and maybe we can talk about some of the challenges and, and how you overcame them for, for staffing operating rooms, for, for protecting your staff in the operating rooms and, and for helping us take care of our patients when nurses were either out sick, quarantined, or caring for family members uh, at home. It was an incredible year and together we were able to make some significant contributions to surgery and to the surgical patients and their families. Uh, we, the roadmaps that we developed, we developed the first one in April and followed through with uh, two revisions after that. And, and that touched on a number of areas that were very important, including the COVID testing of patients, the preoperative testing, 
the testing of employees. Uh, we also looked at PPE and what were some of the issues that were going on with PPE availability. And if it wasn't available, what could be done to augment the, uh, the needs that were occurring? We also looked at telehealth and how we could use telehealth both for patient information, family information, as well as uh, the uh, education, post-op education. So we really had an opportunity to shift, to pivot, and to learn all kinds of new ways to work together and, and to provide information to our, our thousands of members that we represent. We had uh, also the opportunity to work with medical device companies and help them understand what were the re uh, requirements if they were gonna go back into surgery or needed to be in surgery for a specific surgical operation. So that was also an important part. Um, closing down the ORs was easy. That was like, you know, one day we just don't do surgery. But ramping back up took a lot of coordination and collaboration in all of the facilities. Many of them were really geared towards what was going on within that community. And so using the data and how it impacted at each facility was really an important part of, of taking care of what the needs of of the community were. Many operating room nurses actually were the first ones when they started uh, finding out that uh, turning a patient prone was one way to treat COVID patients. It was OR nurses that went out to help with positioning. Um, that's an area of our expertise and it certainly made a difference in being able to help the nurses on the units uh, learn what was important in positioning patients prone. They also went out and worked on the units uh, in a number of other areas just to be augment the nursing staff in those critical times when there was such a shortage of, of nurses. Well, we appreciate all that was done. And although, as, as you said, closing the OR was easy, the re-education to work in intensive care units and on the floors and the emergency room and COVID testing areas may have certainly been challenging and, and the fact that your group responded so well attests to the commitment to improve uh, outcomes for patients, not just in the operating room, but everywhere. Uh, and we're very, very appreciative of it. Uh, what are some of the lessons that, that were learned that you're gonna carry forward as COVID is hopefully in our rear view mirror? Well, I think the most important thing was that this really showed that collaboration and cooperation is absolutely necessary uh, every day. But when we have a, something hit us like the pandemic, where you had to pivot within 24 hours, we had to learn new skills. We had to learn uh, how, to, how the patient flow was changing, um, meeting with the colleagues throughout the institution uh, three and four times a day to see what where, where were the needs, where were the shortages. If, if ever collaboration and cooperation was essential, it was during the pandemic. And those are lessons that we need to learn going forward and always remember that that's, that spells success, is that collaboration. And in the operating room, the surgery, the surgeons, the anesthesiologists, the operating nurses, surgical technologists are all essential. And if, we're, if we are all working on something together, I believe that we will have the outcomes that we really want for all of our patients and for our staff, which is a safe environment with successful surgery and su successful outcomes. Excellent, excellent. And uh, more than just talking about it, you and your group did it. And that's clear to all of us uh, with whom you're collaborating on the surgical side. As we've gone from testing and PPE and redeployment of the workforce, we've entered a new phase 12 months into this pandemic, and that is vaccination. Um, anecdotally, um, we've heard of some groups of um, non-physicians, probably physicians too, but certainly heard about non-physicians who, who do not want to receive vaccines. I, I don't know if you would be able to address that issue in terms of steps that ARN is taking to uh, communicate about vaccines to your members. 
Absolutely, that is essential information that we are giving to our members. And this week we will be joining the American Nurses Association as well as uh, a number of other specialty organizations with uh, all looking at what we can do through our own websites, through some public service announcements uh, on how important vaccinations are for healthcare workers so that we can care for the patients safely, that we will not uh, produce uh, situations that are unsafe for patients because we are safe and have had our vaccinations. There are nurses who do not believe in vaccinations and we accept that, but we continue to try to uh, assist them in understanding how important it is for their own health as well as their families and the patients they care for. Thank you. Messaging is definitely important and it's great to see that you're collaborating with many other groups to deliver those messages to, to nurses. Um, I'd like to give you an opportunity to share any additional thoughts with, which you might have before we close. I think that uh, the importance of our collaboration is so important in supporting each other. When we have any major changes, major pivoting that we need to do, coming together making the plans, implementing the plans, and those institutions that work together as a team ended up having the most satisfaction with the employees as well as the best outcomes for patients. Let's hope this doesn't happen again, but I believe the lessons learned through this pandemic are long lasting and will make a difference in our work going forward together. I wholeheartedly agree with you uh, and think that one of the lessons is the collaboration and we can always do more, uh, work on more projects together to figure out how going forward, we make surgery safe together uh, for all of our patients. So we appreciate everything you do. And I certainly personally appreciate your time, reflections and insights today with our, our viewing and listening audience. Uh, thanks for all that you do year round and, and, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you for the opportunity.